My name is Letha Wilson and I am a visual artist. I work with a range of materials, but I'm really interested in how landscape photography can be sculptural and break outside its typical traditional confines. I was born in Honolulu, um, but I grew up in Colorado. And I'm named after my great-grandmother, Letha. When I was a kid, I was always really into art and drawing. And um, I decided very, I believe it was sixth or seventh grade, I told my dad, like, I'm going to go to college and major in art. And he was like, no, you're not. <laughs> and basically forbade me um, and I was very determined so I convinced my dad that like I could be a graphic design major and a graphic designer is a job and like that's something I can go to school for art for so that was kind of my plan. I never thought I'm going to be an artist. I definitely never thought that was a job that someone could do. <laughs> I still kind of don't know if I do but my brother and me and my parents would do these backpack trips uh, in the Rocky Mountains. I think those very intense times in nature stuck with me. So when I moved to New York State when I was 18, I went to Syracuse University to study art. And I just kept thinking about these landscapes, you know, from back home. And that kind of stayed with me. And even in undergrad, started working with these landscape images in my artwork. I went to grad school. I went to Hunter College. And I kind of decided to start poking at the conventions of photography. And also very specifically that I'm going to work with landscape images, like landscape photography, because what is, you know, a contemporary landscape photograph? Like, can landscape photography move beyond like Ansel Adams or a calendar image or this beautiful thing? And I think I was really kind of torn with the side, like the beauty of it and, and wanting to sort of wrestle with it and wanting to kind of destroy the beauty of it and this conflicting frustration, I think, with the flatness and almost like inertness of a, a photograph um, compared to the actual experience of being in these places. I was interested in materials that have this, this relationship to the landscape and nature, but also to building and architecture. So wood paper, two by fours, drywall, and concrete. I started experimenting with it and really went down this rabbit hole with a photograph. And specifically, these are sea prints that I'm printing in the darkroom, that plus concrete. There's a mystery there. It creates this image like, oh my gosh, it's magic. So there's something similar, like in concrete, you add water, you mix it up, poof, it hardens, you know? So there's a little bit of that like, I approach both of these processes almost like as a beginner and you don't know any better so then you stumble upon these things and it keeps it interesting. I do choose the materials with this starting point but then I'm also throwing them into these situations where unexpected things happen. This is a photograph I printed in the dark room. I actually like always have like rocks that I hold the paper down that come off as like photogram elements, but I've started adding materials um, to the process. So you have this, this is just like a piece of screen and sometimes it's metal or dowels or rocks that then are another element. So there's the photograph, there's two prints. You can actually see in this case, they're like layered. And basically I build a plywood box around it and there's kind of a structure inside. There's a cleat inside of it. There's also lath, actually the same material that's in this photogram is inside the piece. Basically, I kind of set up the photograph and then I'm pouring the concrete directly onto the face and then flip it over and it cures for a couple days and then open it up again, add more, flip it over and then finally pour it from behind to fill it. So it's pretty much solid concrete. And there's these moments like where the photo is touching the concrete and it gets this kind of crazy color hue and this is uh, the texture of the plywood, which you see here. 
One technique which is more recent in my work is uh, UV printing or flatbed printing where I'm able to put any material and the printer can, well, it actually sprays the ink down on it and sets it. For example, Corten steel is something I use quite a bit and these are for outdoor sculptures. So they actually take these pieces of steel, put them in the printer and print directly on top of them. So in order to kind of develop those pieces, I make models in my studio. Um, just kind of at the scale and then sort of scale everything up. So this just is like my kind of brainstorming phase. This is actually the sculpture that is now at RIT. Uh, this is the model for it. Um, this is kind of cool because I was sort of, they, I already knew the size of this concrete pad and the circle. So it sort of started with the base and then designed the piece up. The cool thing about this piece, there's this element in the middle that is just going to be steel and it changes over time. It rusts, it becomes red, it has a sort of patina. So I'm really interested to see how this piece will change as it's outside and the kind of Corten patina will start to like really get closer to this image of the rock face. I think that ultimately like I'm a fan of sculpture because there's so many, you know, viewpoints possible and ways of seeing and just multiplicity. Um, and then when you combine the image in there and then you put it outdoors, to me, that's just kind of exciting potential. I'm kind of like obsessed with palm trees. I don't know, they're just so amazing. Like what the heck? My approach to taking photographs over the years has, has changed. Um, in the beginning, I was looking for these sort of iconic landscapes or the vista or when the cloud comes over this edge or, you know, you go there looking, go, go out to these places, maybe looking for, for something you're expecting to find. And I, and, and as I would, you know, go out and shoot and, and I would take these walks and be shooting. And I realized that this close up of the tree branch could also potentially be a material as could this, as could this. So it sort of opened it up, whereas like anything, any image I take could potentially come back to be an artwork. So it freed it up. It freed up the process of shooting to where I could kind of do no wrong. You go out there, you're enjoying it, you're aware, you're present, and then you bring it back. So I started making sculptures using element from the landscape uh, photograph. I actually went back to the dark room and started printing my own photographs because I already had all these negatives. I just needed material. I needed material to play with and screw up and feel less precious. And to me, the darkroom was the answer because for $14 an hour, I could just go in there and print a bunch of photos, bring them back to the studio and then rip it, tear it, whatever, I'll go make more. So that became kind of part of my process. Getting more playful, getting more dirty, getting more weird in the studio, being able to make a mistake and just practicing and just like pushing, like what can this photograph do? I'm really interested in what are people's assumptions about how something should be and then flip that upside down. So when I'm choosing a material or process, like a photograph isn't supposed to do this. I'm kind of interested in like subverting what people think the way it should be as a way to possibly open up their perspective. I mean, I think almost always in every piece, I'm really trying to create this conflict. It's like a balance. It's not like a man versus nature, but kind of a, it's complicated, you know? <laughs> I'm always interested in learning from the materials, pushing what's possible. It's almost like a mad scientist approach to these materials. And it's also rooted in like a deep appreciation for these natural spaces. I think the thing I always loved about being an artist is it like includes all parts of myself. And I've somehow managed to create a practice that, you know, if I feel like taking a trip, that could be my work. If I want to look through a bunch of photos and pick ones out, that could be something. If I want to like pour concrete or get messy or weld something, that's part of it. So it's like I'm kind of be able to weave in all these aspects of myself onto this umbrella of my work, which is very fun. <laughs>